Okay, today we're taking uh, Daisy out. This is the Kentucky mountain horse that was not really gating. And she has a very uh, short stride. And if she gets tense, she's shorten that stride up even more and goes towards the trotty side. So some of you have posted like you can't get your horse to gate. A lot goes into gating. So let's talk about the babies. So if you bought a baby horse, and that means a horse that's under like the age of six, it's not going to have much time on it. And each horse is born with its different genetics. So some just gate, and some just pace, and some just trot, and some gate, trot, and pace, and some trot and pace, and they do all sorts of stuff. So if you bought a young horse, you didn't ride it, and now that it's growing, you're seeing it just trots or paces, you have to know you, you're the one who bought this horse, and so you're gonna be the one who either sends it to the trainer to have them help it to gate because it's got the genetics it just has to learn or it's got to be you so you got to remember that when you buy a young horse or you buy a yearling and then you want to raise it some of them yes will just gate but other ones will trot or pace and those are the ones that you have to teach to gate and so if you didn't know that going in you know that right now that, uh, So that horse was in the um, bushes and she had a heart attack. Now, you're always looking, there's lots of stuff around me, right? So my thing when she was freaking out was where do I steer? Not like stop her from freaking out? No, I can't do that. I just wanted to keep myself safe so, safe, so I know there's gullies and I know there's other crud. and. Uh, so that was my thing is steer and figure out where to put her feet and then deal with the other part after so we don't hit a tree or anything like that. Now that was pretty scary, wasn't it? And we'll see what it looks like on the video. But the horse was hiding in the trees and she got freaked out and didn't like that and so she spun. She's only seven. Each horse is different. And that's what you gotta figure out going in with these horses is what it, what do they do when they're scared? Do they just spook or they spin? Or And she's been pretty good. She hasn't really spooked at anything. So she was petrified, but she's a young horse and that stuff can happen. All right, so going back to, if you bought a yearling and you knew what you were doing, you'd get one that you saw just gating out in the field. But if it just trotted out in the field and that's what you bought, then you gotta learn how to fix the trotty horse. Same thing if the horse just paced, and uh, if it just pays, sorry, I'm trying to watch all this metal stuff as we're going in here. Good girl. If it just pays, then I'm going to have to know how to fix the pace. Good job, girly. Yeah, it's okay. Thanks for scaring us, goofball. He's like, okay, I'll get you next time, too. So, you have to know that going in with a young horse and to get their gait, if they're pacey or trotty, you're going to have to take your time. You're going to have to do a lot of walking. Like I say in my things, you know, three months of walking is good. A lot of trainers will walk the horse for like a whole year before they'll get it to gait. But people are impatient and so you'll do other things and then you might ruin your horse. So, be patient. If you've got a baby, take your time. And you just get it to walk, separating its legs well, and when it can do that really well, and it's staying relaxed, then you can start adding slowly more and more speed. But it takes a long time because these horses that are growing go through growing spurts. And so their body's going to change. And so as their body changes, good girl, she's like, I'm looking at shit to spook at gay. As their body changes, so is their gait going to change. So they might be gating well, and then all of a sudden they're not gating well because they're going through a growth spurt. You have to know all of that with a young horse. And then over time, as their muscles mature and they get older and you ride them correctly and, you know, only have people know what they're doing, ride that horse and gate it, then they're going to get much better over time. I have a little stick in my hand. 
Uh, this is the first time her going up the hill. We did go on this trail before, but the horse didn't pop out. And uh, we got to go by the farmer, so we'll see what she does. And that's a good thing. You got to have good balance. If you don't have good balance and something happens like that, you know, you can fall off. So you're always trying to practice things to give you an independent and good seat. Uh, and you might be like, what are those things? Uh, go in the round pen. Let your horse just wander around and or have somebody move it and let it turn. And you don't, you know, you can hold on to the saddle. But you just practice keeping your seat going with the horse and not steering it. Good girl. Also, we're going by that scarecrow thing. Might be a little scared. Now we'll see how she does up here. Um, if you can catch your horse when it spins, like she was spinning, I couldn't catch it because I'm so concerned with not going over the metal things and flipping over. But if she just spun to the right, you pull left. If they spin left, you pull right. But you always have to be aware of your surroundings so you know if you can do those things or not. But sometimes you can't. I am. Yeah, she's scared of the hat moving. <laughs> That's why I was waiting for your dog. <laughs> Thank you. Good girl. You're okay. Don't step on that. Good girl. So, yeah, the same thing. See, this is a young horse and he was moving his hat. And if you don't know anything about young horses, you might be oblivious to that. She doesn't see it like I see, and that was blurry, and he was moving something, and I know if I got up there and he moved that hat, she might spook and take out all this irrigation on the farmer's land, so. And then, of course, that's dangerous, because then we're tangled in it, so it's best to stop, let the horse look, or just go up and walk by. Okay, so, she's doing okay, but at least the way she's acting, she's acting like she hasn't been on the trail by herself very much, or at least not trails where there's things out here. Because there's people in these flowers, you can't see them. But she can smell them, she can hear them, and she might be able to see some movement. Okay. So a horse like this, I'm not going to be on a loose rein, hell no. I'm going to be on a short rein, I'm going to have a light contact, so I can feel what's going on and try to help her and prevent things. And uh, even though she can't gate that well, that's going to be the least of my worries this trail ride. Girl. Okay. So, but she's going out here for me. It's not like she's sucking back. She's not like Tilly running backwards and freaking out. Like, ah! She's like, I'll, I'll do it. But Jesus, that horse scared the crap out of me back there. Okay, it's the same thing. You're walking around the house, someone jumps out of the closet that scares the hell out of you. So that's all that happened. And the, this, what happens with young horses? So you have to be prepared and forgiving and know those things can happen. They don't have years and years of experience. All right, so the horse that can't gait. So we talked about the yearling and the young horse. You gotta take your time and you gotta build the muscle and you gotta show them how to do it correctly. If you just wanna go, then you better well buy one that just gates. okay? Because all these horses do different things and even though they say gait naturally, it can, but maybe it only gates naturally two steps and you didn't ask that. So it's not like people lied, it does have a natural gait. It just has to be, uh, the horse has to be helped to get that gait and make that gait better. Just like an athlete as a kid, you know, they have to be taught what to do, to, how to play the sport and how to get better for it. Okay. So now say you got an older horse and it just trots or paces. Well, first of all, those are usually the cheaper horses. So if that's what you bought, that's what you bought. And because the ones that just eat well, they're going to be more expensive. Just like the horses that behave better are going to be more expensive. The ones that have issues, like spinning around, are going to be cheaper. And it's just the way that life goes. So you got to know what you can deal with and know what you can help the horse with. So if you got a horse that just trots like this one, I'm going to do a lot of walking out here because this is sand and the sand is deep and deep footing makes trotty horses trottier. So I never want to go too fast or she might trot, but I can ask her for a fast walk. Like this is, she has a short stride. So this is her flat walk. 
and lots of people think this isn't gating it is gating it's just a slow gate but i got to be able to do this first before i can go faster and in the arena look she's like i'm looking at stuff to get scared of gay in the arena so i'm gonna uh leg yield her a little bit because she's looking around instead of me waiting until she spooks i'll try to occupy her mind but she's occupying it with spooking i can feel it so this lateral work going side to side like leg yielding is great for the pacey horses it separates their legs it's not the best for the trotty horses because it separates her legs more and that will make her trot more so i wouldn't want to do this at a gate but i can do it at the walk because it's not going to do anything to that okay so as we're gating i want to keep her more straight when i go to do it and she does better when her head's kind of neutral. A lot of trotty horses are better with their heads up, but not her. She's better with it kind of neutral. So you got to find that sweet spot of where their head is and uh, what gait they'll do. So with her, I got a flat walk in the arena. That's going pretty good. I'm starting to go a little faster. And sometimes she does a little bit of a running walk and sometimes she does a little bit of a fox trot. So fox trot's gonna be easier for her to get because at, at well she's a smart mare, yes. Because she spooked at this and I said, Well you have to look at it, and she said, I'm gonna jump in the bush and run down that hill. And when she did, she started losing her footing. <laughs> and so she said, Well, I guess I won't do that. <laughs> so that's a smart horse, because a lot of them would be flying down that hill 50 feet. Hey, okay, good girl. Good job. So now we're gonna keep going this way. And that's okay, uh, these feather plants, I don't know the name of them, I'm sure one of you do. They're beautiful, but it freaks a lot of the horses out because their eyes are attracted to motion and they're constantly moving. Okay. But So I saw she has some self-preservation, but not a whole lot of it and so she uh, is going to do some stupid stuff so I got to make sure I'm aware of that so I help her with those things and try to keep her out of trouble till her brain comes back okay so going downhill she's pretty sure-footed the trotty ones are because they pick their feet up higher and so they can get over things so that's the good thing about the trotty horses the pacey horses are a little less sure-footed and sometimes because they're dragging their feet they'll get trippy so you got to help them go over things and teach them to pick up their feet by doing lots and lots of obstacles going over rocks riding in mud going off the trail stepping over logs and keep teaching them to pick their feet up um, some of them are very calm you know it's bred that way and you get one that's a little pacey and it's very calm and that makes for a very trippy horse so you got to keep it awake give it jobs to do teach it to pick its feet up because that's what you bought so that's what you got to deal with so if your horse paces or trot, you got to ride the correct speed and then you slowly pick up speed over time. If you have no experience with gating, then you will not have the feel and you will not have the time to get the gate. And that's what the trainers have, the time in the field. They can feel the gate coming underneath them and they know how to keep it by using their half halts and their leg. They know when to stop and rest the horse before it breaks gate. And that's what a lot of people don't know. So you're stopping at the wrong time and resting it when it's pacing so the horse paces more or you're going too fast and that's what's making it pace so you got to get the horse to separate its legs and you got to keep practicing walking faster and faster and then the gate will usually just calm but depends what gate you're trying to get as well so the best thing to do is to take lessons. Take lessons with a gated trainer. Now again, I do lessons online. I can I help people from all over the world, but if you don't send in your, she's fox trotting. If you don't send in your video, which is uh, information on my website, I can never help you. So when you're trying to get better, see she's, she's going faster. This is pretty good for her. It's not, she's not a super fast gating horse, but she's gating, so that's good. This is smooth. Um, and going uphill is going to make her trottier, so I know not to go too fast. But I do want to build her hindquarters. You know, see, there she started to trot. She's like, hey, Gabe, trotting's easier up this hill. And I was like, no, you need to walk and you need to build that hindquarters so you can gate. So I'm not going to ever let her trot out. 
horse. You can foxtrot with no trotting. Okay? So you got to make sure that a horse knows he can't, they can't trot and they can't pace. So all they can do is walk, gait. Um, the pacey ones you can canter, the trotty ones you be careful about cantering them too soon because if you do, they'll try to canter all the hills instead of gating up them because it's easier. Okay? So save the cantering for the end of your trail ride when the horse is tired. Otherwise, you try to gait or walk up all the hills and down the hills. So, if nobody points out when your horse is gating like that one step, and nobody points out you're in the wrong body position, you know, your legs out in front of you or behind you, you're staring at the horse's head, your shoulders are forward or back, all these things can affect gait, or you're not using your hands correctly, or your balance is off. Again, all those things affect the gait. So if you're trying to do this on your own, it is going to be a lot harder versus having somebody help you. And again, we can help you online, help many people, but you have to send in the video so you can see. You can't just complain, my horse won't gait and I've been doing what you told me and it just won't work because I can't see it, so I can't help you. Okay. Good girl, she's gaping. Now see, this is not very fast. So many of you are like, oh, that's nothing. That's just a walk. No, that's her gait. So if I missed that and tried to go much faster, then again, she'd just be trotting down the trail. You don't want to practice trotting. You want to practice your walk and your gait. Okay. So if you got a horse that didn't gait, you have to learn how to help it to gait. The best way to do that and the shortest way to do that is to get help. If you're teaching yourself, it's going to take 10 times to 100 times as long. If you have someone helping you, it's going to go much quicker and much faster. Sometimes just changing the bit will help you or changing the saddle, but you wouldn't know that unless somebody pointed that out to you. Okay? That's what I did with this horse. He came with this uh, bit. It's supposed to help horses gait. That's how people are selling it. Like this horse, will, this bit will get your horse to gait. And guess what? She wasn't gaiting very well in it at all. And uh, it was too much motion in her mouth, too many things to distract her. So now we have a different bit, and uh, she's doing much better. Okay? And she was in a snaffle, and now she's in a shank. And so it's helping her to keep her head down better. Okay? So now here, going downhill, she's going a little fast. It's making her more lateral, so that's perfect. Let them go down faster if they're trotty. Okay? But you have to have good... Uh, balance and confidence to, to let them do that, but you, uh, you're trying to build up the right muscles, not the wrong ones, okay? So when they're trotting, they're picking their feet up, and they usually round their back out, so you got to make sure if you have a trotty one, they don't round their back out too much, you don't have their head too low. If it's pacey, you don't want their head too high, and you don't want their back too inverted. Now we're going uphill, I know she's going to try to trot, yeah? And I just said, no, no, half halt, half halt, you stay slow, half halt. Now I got my left leg on her and I'm ready to stick my spur right in her side. And you might be, what? Why would you do that? What's that going to do with her gait? It's not going to do anything. The bush over there, they uh, plowed it and it scares all the horses and all the horses jump left. But I saw with her, she'll take me off into those bushes. So I, knowing that ahead of time that she could get scared, I want to be ready with all my equipment that if she goes, I'm going to jab her hard with that spur because that's what's going to keep us alive and safe is staying on this trail. So you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Now for her first time out, I don't think she's doing bad. She is spooky, but not the spookiest I've been on. And, uh, Overall, I think she did pretty well. Now, the trail keeps going, but I'm not going to push it. Right? So, and there's a big tractor or something over there, isn't there? At least the fire's out. All right, so before... Yeah, you want a cookie? That's her reward for coming up here. So, you're on a young horse, you assess stuff. I, like, there's a tractor over there moving stuff. Am I going to take her over there? No, there's no... There's drop-offs on both sides of this. It's like cliff, so... No, this horse is spooky. I ain't taking her over here. There, that would be stupid. <laughs> okay? It's the opposite of stupid, being smart. So let's be smart. And we're going to go back down the hill. And as we turn, if she speeds up, we'll know she's barn sour. No, she turned very nicely. 
So that's all good, saying that once she gets enough exposure, she'll be she'll be a good horse. But we have to always know each horse spooks differently. You have to know what what do they do. My horse Tilly, when I had her up here and she got really scared, she took us off the cliff. She, yeah, she went running backwards, ran right off the side of the trail, and we were going down the hill backwards. That was uh, really fun and exciting. And I did have to go home and have a glass of wine after that. <laughs> so we survived though. Hey, and I got her back on the trail and now she's quite good and not doing that anymore, but I know that's in her. So some horses get so scared, their first option is run. Their second option is, ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Now we're going down some crazy hill backwards. Okay, so you gotta know, does, does your horse have that in them? Does, do they react first and then they think, oh, that was a bad move? Because then it's up to you to keep them safe and paying attention and trying to help things ahead of time. Okay, she did okay to go down that hill. But I can tell just from her going down that hill, she did pretty well, but I can tell she doesn't know what she's doing. If she had been ridden down hills a lot, she'd be able to get on her hindquarters more and slow down and go down that street, but she didn't. Okay, so now we're gonna go a little faster because we're working on her gait. So this is her flat walk. Now going uphill makes them trottier, right? So I'm gonna keep my weight back. I don't wanna lean forward because that would make her trottier. And this is fine. This is a gate. It's a little faster than a flat walk. I'm gonna half haul, half haul, half haul. And I'm pushing and she's using her back end and she's staying smooth, so that's good. But it's not about speed. It's about getting the correct footfall and building their strength. If you don't wanna work on this, then you just go get a horse that gates well and you don't have to. But you can't complain if you're not gonna put the, um, if you don't put effort in, okay? As you go through life, there's lots of opportunities. There's opportunities to buy horses that gate well. There's opportunities to buy horses that don't gate well. And you have to understand what your decision was and what you did. And now that's what you got to work with, okay? Any horse can be great, but if you don't help it get there, it will not get there on its own because it does not care if it gates or not. It makes no difference to the horse. It's just more work. They're going to do what they do naturally, and she trots naturally. Okay, she did pretty good with that turkey hawk flying across. All right, so now we're going downhill, so we're going a little faster. And now with her, I like to alternate my legs. I left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, or I give her a little taps with my stick, because if I squeeze with both legs, she's so used to going to that trot, she thinks that's the cue, so I want different cues. Now she's fox trotting. Good girl. Now something just went off like a gun. But she did pretty good with that. Now I know she's scared of these fluffy tree things, so I'm keeping my right leg on. In case she goes flying. And there is deer up here, and sometimes they hide in those bushes. Okay, now let's go a little faster. So I do practice their gait. But you gotta be able to feel it. So half halt, because she just went to try to trot. She's good. Now she's trying to trot, so a little half haul. I don't want to let her trot ever again, except when she's loose and nobody's on her back. So she can lunge and trot, and she can run around and trot, but when I'm on her back, I don't want her to trot. Okay, now we're going downhill. She's looking around. Now she's going sideways, and she doesn't have a big stride. It's not like she's a walking horse and she can't get down the hill straight because she's stepping on her front feet with her back feet. She has short strides. She just doesn't know how to handle the hills. Okay. And that's something you have to teach your horse. Now, some horses know how to handle hills because the person who had them rode them up and down hills. And other horses have never been on a hill in their life or what they've been on is a hill and you're riding mountains. You know, you're in Colorado or Montana or Oregon or California. We, we have mountains. We, we don't have hills so much. And that's very steep and that's much different for the horse. So if the horse has weak stifles, weak back end, it's got to build all those things up before it can go down those hills correctly. And so it might try to run down the hills if it can't handle it, or it may try to go real slow down the hills, or it might just stop and be like, I'm not going down that thing because they can't do it. So you got to build them up. You can't just take them out and decide to ride the heck out of them on steep hills when they're coming from somewhere flat. 
All right, so let's gate again. So I'm going to alternate my legs, one leg then the other. Now I'm giving her little taps with my stick because I can get a little bit more energy without getting too much. If I use my legs, sometimes it's too much for her. So that stick is very helpful. Or you could wear spurs and just a light touch with the spur. Because you're trying to get more, but not too much. So she is going better. Now her head's down, she's pretty good. Again with her, I'm not going to bring her head up. Now right now we're on flat footing, we're pretty good, I know that. And we're going to come up here on the sand. The sand is going to be deep, half halt, she just tried to trot. And when I get in this deep sand, she's going to get trottier. So I'm going to sit back more to get my weight on her back end, which helps her not be so trotty. Now she's fox trotting, so that's okay. So yes, when I say like walk more and practice more, you know, you have to understand you can't go super fast. You have to slowly build them up and build their strength. If you want them to last, you want them to understand and have a good gait and you want them to do it all the time. Lots of trainers can switch the bits in their mouth, run the horse faster and get them to do that saddle gait. Okay, that's one of the easiest gates to get. But getting the flat walk, your running walk, your fox trot, those things are much harder and takes a little bit more patience, time, and feel. Now she, I got my right leg on her because she's scared. She's looking at that thing, the fluffy plant. So she's still looking at it. So I'm just ready to correct her if she tries to go in that bush that we were just in. All right. So here we can speed up a little bit, but I'm using one leg then the other. So you try different things. If you're like, this horse has always been pacing, most people use both legs. So try doing something different, you know, alternate your legs, they yield them. Now right now she's pretty smooth. Now it goes downhill a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more leg. So you can go a little faster than the walk, but going too slow is better than going too fast, okay? If that horse, like, if she, the person riding her just kept trotting, I'd be like, you're going way too fast. Because you see, she has trotted once in a while with me, but not that much because I'm not going too fast. This is a nice smooth gait. We're going downhill, so it makes her a little bit more lateral. I don't have her head up to help her. She does better with the kind of uh, horn level. Good job. So besides trying to kill me right in the very beginning, she's done quite well. So she's a very willing horse. Tries. It's just she got she got scared, and that was her go-to. Like, ah. it's not like she wanted to spin around in circles. She wanted to just spin around and run the other way. She went in circles because then I wouldn't let her turn and go. And it that happens with the horse, and you do it over and over again. When they try to run, they can't get away. Down the road, at some point, they'll be like, "How oh, the spook in place." because I can't run away. And then she makes me go up to it. So it's better I just look here, stand here and look at it, and then I'll go. But same thing, if you don't do the right thing, when they're spinning, you'll teach them to spin more and you'll scare them more. Okay, so she's walking out. This is her gait right now. We got nothing faster. Now a couple more weeks, I expect it's gonna be throw them out faster. But we'll see. So I'm a pretty well balanced person. So if somebody was on her and they were unbalanced and going downhill, I think she'd have even a harder time. Okay, because you got to be balanced and stay out of their way. But you also got to help them and show them what speed to do and not to run down the hill. Or if they get stuck, to push them forward. 
So lots of times when you buy horses, you don't know they're a spinner and all these things because, you know, the people probably didn't ride them enough. So they might not have told you because it never happened at hand because they never exposed the horse to anything really scary. And so they don't know, so they don't tell you. Or they do know, and that's why they're selling the horse, and they just scammed you. So you just don't know. But you know, you bought the horse and you try to make an effort, if you can, to fix it. If it's something you think you can handle, you know, that's why she's here in training. We'll see if she it's good enough that they can handle her. Okay, so now she's actually going pretty fast down the hill and I'm letting her go because it's helping her gait. And she might speak up here. I'm gonna come by you again. trip. <laughs> Almost gotten there with you. <laughs> That's, yeah, I was trying to steer over the irrigation. She didn't pick her foot up. She's not a trippy horse, so she just made a mistake. That's all, That's all okay. Now a lot of times I get down here and I go straight because I go like going a different way. But since she spooked from that horse coming out of the bushes, guess what? That's where we're going to go back down to. And he might come out of the bushes again. And that was her first time going by that thing. So as we go by it every day, she'll start to realize it's not a monster and it's a horse. And someday she won't be freaking out as much over that. But it's hard when you, you know, you're trail running, you don't know what to expect. You're at a new place and things are going to come out. Yes, your horse could possibly spook. And she's not a spooky horse, but you just went by the scarecrow and she didn't care at all. But anytime you go by new places with a young horse, you know, you're, you're the one exposing it. That's the benefit of old horses. They've seen lots of these things before. And so... Some of them aren't as reactive, but you got to pick the right ones. You know, I love old horses, and the people say, I have an old horse, and he's horrible. Oh, I would love that one. <laughs> you got to pick the right one. You got to pick the non-spooky, sure-footed, well-gated ones. And, and those are great. Okay. So now she's, she's gating. She, again, she's not fast, but she's doing it pretty well. She's staying smooth, she's not trotting. Now this bush up here on the right, that's where that horse is. And I don't know if he's on the other side or he's in the bushes. Good girl. So she wants to stop and look and I'm fine with that. Now I can see where he is. Now, again, they look from turning their head side to side, which I always let them do, but if they turn their head and try to go the other direction, I don't let them do that. Okay. See how she's starting to go? Yeah, you're a big faker. All right. So now we're going to push her a little bit. I believe he's out of the bushes from what I can tell, but she's ready. She's like, oh, you better hang on, gay. So that's quail that's running in there. Good girl, you're okay. Come on, I got you. So hands wide, sit back. I know I might go into this bush. I'm ready with my left leg. See, there he is. Ah, we got you back. So now I spooked him. <laughs> Yeah, you spooked us, we spooked you, now we're even. Okay, so now let's see how she goes by this now that she sees it's a horse. She still might be nervous in here because there's bushes and equipment and it's just a little scary. And they're, if you can't hear me, they're drilling a well to the left. Now she's speeding up. Yeah, you're scared, aren't you? She's like, yeah, why did you pull on the reins? 
so she started speeding up so i stopped her she stood that was pretty good now she's getting antsy so i just spun her around to take the power away from her hind quarter so she just told me she didn't want to do that now she wouldn't go forward so i went left right left right with my reins and now I'm keeping her head up a little bit because she's acting like, hey, maybe I'll do something to dislodge you. So she was totally fine until I got to this spot. And she's like, I don't like this spot. And I'm going to take you off, Jay. You can feel it. Okay, now she's better. So that was not very nice of her. But something there she did not like. Right? Now she's not going super fast, but she's walking out faster than she left. And so I'm going to take that as we should go in the arena for a little bit and we're going to walk around there. So that antsiness and uh, her being a little scared gave her more go, which is helping her gait. And so let's go in there and practice it a little bit and that'll also help so she doesn't get barn sour. Now we're in here. And so I'm going to ask her for a little bit of speed. And I'm going to time it too. So she's good so far. Sides being crooked. Now she's trying to trot. So we just load her back down. Their go-to is the pace or the trot because they've been allowed to do that. So just don't allow them to do it anymore. But you got to immediately pull them up. And so you got to ride by yourself. And you have to practice this. And you got to ride in the arena because your friends are going to go fast. And you're just going to keep pacing or trotting. And your horse will never get better. So if that's your option, then you just either buy another horse or ride with other people. Get new friends. So this is her foxtrot, which is fine. She's veering towards the gate. So I just got my left leg on her. And all I'm doing is just trying to straighten her head and keep her going. Now she's stopping. And she's got to be tired. There are some hills there. And I just keep half halting. Every time I feel that foxtrot, like right there, not be so smooth then I just half halt on her and tell her no and I don't want her to curl up somebody probably taught her to bring her head down too much that will just make her trottier so I got to keep it kind of neutral and I'm trying to keep her body straight because she's getting very crooked so there I just picked her head up because it got a little too low So she was good, and then she just got trotty. So every time she trots, I just half halt and be like, no, no, no. But you gotta be able to feel that. You gotta try to catch it as soon as you can. There, she got her head down too much. So I know if she curls her head down like this, she's gonna start trotting. So we don't want that. So I try to bring her head up, and then I leave her alone again. she's pretty good so we're gonna stop oh good girl so we'll stop we're gonna rest her for a minute and then we're gonna go some more a big mistake would be 
she started rushing back to the barn a little bit. She was gating, which was nice, but she comes back. She goes fast. She messed around with that, you know, that horse and got antsy in that spot. And I come back and tack her feet or put her away because then I reward her for everything bad that she did. So that's why you want to come in the arena, do some work. You come back and they're being bad. Don't put them back in their stall. That's like giving a kid a raise on their allowance when they didn't pick up their stuff. You're just teaching them not to be a good kid. So. Now she just tried to go towards the gate there. No, head's too low. Head's too low. Now she's trotting. Now she's totally crooked. So, and I know how to use my legs because her head went left and her body went right. So I had to use my reins to straighten her head and then my legs to straighten her body. Good girl. Uh, uh, good girl. Good girl. So now she's pretty good. It's pretty fast for her. Nope, now she just fell out of it, so I just half faltered. her. But the only way she'll learn how to do this is me guiding her. So the only way your horse is going to learn how to gate is somebody guiding that horse who can help it and tell it how to gate. That wasn't good. That was trotty, so half faltered. You can either make opportunities or make excuses. You can you can make opportunities. I'm right here. You send me your videos. I'll help you to get that gate. It's going to be work. You have to know that. But if you follow the program I give you, you'll get it. If you don't follow it, then no, you won't get it. So, and then otherwise you can make excuses like it's too hard. I don't have time. This is difficult. to make excuses and it's best just to save your money sell the horse you got and get a horse that gates better half fault so she's kind of there she's trotty half fault now i didn't expect it to be great in here because she's tired good girl we're in deep footing girl. Uh, uh. So when I'm saying uh, uh, that's when she's doing the wrong thing. And that's the trot. Uh, uh. Now she's not all crooked this direction. And she's not getting her head tucked way in either, but it's lower. Good girl. Okay. Oh. So that was good. So we're going to stop for a minute. So see this blown tarp? She's not afraid of that. So she's not afraid of what she can see. She's just afraid of what she can't see. And her go-to is run away. When she sees it, she's okay. She's going to get better. Yeah, because she hasn't been on the trail in a while. And I just took her up past some scary stuff. And uh, I think she did, right? You did quite well. All right, let's do a little bit more gate. Now she's going backwards and I got a stick so I can tap her. Okay, they'll mess with you, so you got to have tools, that's why you always see me have spurs and a stick, so if the horse does something, I can correct it. If you can't correct it, they'll get away with a lot of stuff, and you'll be thinking, well, gay's mean with that spur and stick. No, they're just to help support if I need them. It's meaner to give that horse bad habits. Nobody's going to want them. If a good horse... If you give a horse good habits, everybody wants them. So this is a fox trot. It feels like a trot, um, but it's a soft bounce. You can't post to it. That's another way you know you're fox trotting. It feels like a trot, but you can't post. It's too hard to post to it because there's no suspension. And so you should feel a soft bounce, but there shouldn't be any air between the saddle and you. Um, each horse is different, but it's usually not a very fast gait. You know, your rack is going to be faster. Your running, walking, foxtrot will have different speeds depending on the horse. But with her, it's not going to be fast at this point. 
Well, now that was very good. Yeah, good enough to quit. She tried, she did the right thing. So overall she did well.